All right. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Um, in this live stream, I would like to walk you through the article that I just sent to you. Um, and I'm just going to be breaking it down in terms of language and content so that you understand it better and also find a better way, right? Learn a better way of reading articles just by watching me. And I'll also tell you a few things about how you can improve your reading, oh, sorry, writing through reading. And obviously, you know, um, whether you like it or not, you're going to be improving your reading, right? Like, nonetheless, right? What, what do you call, how do you call that? Like, no matter what, you're definitely going to improve your reading as well. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Uh, how do you, how do I do that? Uh, looks like, all right, just a second. All right. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Uh, we're going to get started basically with this article um, that goes like talking horse sense. I, I don't understand what they mean by that. But when you talk some sense into someone, right? Uh, like talk some sense into someone, it means you kind of like teach someone something, um, what? Like, for example, someone pulls off, uh, how, how, do you, how do I explain that? Like, let's Im imagine that someone, you know, uh, does something stupid in public, right? And then you, you, you kind of pull them aside and then talk some sense into them, meaning that you kind of, you know, explain to them uh, what that is and what, 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 you know, what you can do and what you can't do, right? So that's basically it. And talk in horse sense, I, I'm guessing the article is going to be about um, how we need to learn more about horses, probably. Let's see. When it comes to equine, equine sports, animal right, rights protesters need to base their efforts on science, not emotions. That's, a, that's going to be a great read, I can imagine. So equine sports. Let, I, I don't know that word, to be honest. Equine sports. Equ, equine. Is that how it's pronounced? Equine. Connected with horses or appearing similar to a horse. Oh, like that's, that's, you know, new. I did not know that, you know, you, there was an adjective describing a horse, right? So connected with horses. Horse-like, all right? So equine flu, right? The portrait showed an arist aristocratic family with long equine, equine faces. Equine. Um, horses are known for their long faces, right? And this is here, like, sh showing how that family is so aristocratic that they are compared to a horse, which is quite magnificent in its nature as well. And, and is quite respected among other animals. So, um, all right, equine sports, horse-related sports. Animal rights protesters need to base their efforts on science. Base your efforts on something. It means they, they need to, you know, make efforts not because of science, uh, not because of their emotions, but because of science. They need to, you know, rely on science uh, with their efforts, with with what they're doing. All right, Hill 16 broke his neck falling at the uh, at the first fence of this year's Grand National Race at Aintree in the UK. So Hill 16, I think I'm guessing that it's the name of a horse, broke his neck falling at the first fence of this year's Grand. So um, fence is like that um, border, if you will, right, where you can't quite go past it. Um, all right. Animal rights activists say the ten-year-old um, thoroughbred. I think that's the that's its breed. You know, its species, its uh, type, its sort. Um, would still be alive today if he hadn't been forced to race over the jumps. This is a really nice grammatical structure, right? So, um, so would still be alive today, right? Uh, if he hadn't, I'm not sure which conditional this is. Uh, I'm not really good at grammar, but this is certainly a good structure. He would still be alive today if he hadn't, right? Hadn't. Um, it's it's quite interesting because you would normally use past perfect with, um, you know, 
like I think uh, yeah I guess this is this is normal right so if he had been forced to you know race over the jumps all right he the horse's trainer blames the death on animal rights activists um so what they're saying is like the horse's trainer thinks that the death is actually the animal rights you know activists fault what does that mean so here we have an m dash which is telling us which is giving us the that like you know which is explaining us how the death is uh, because of animal rights activists. The very ones hoping to protect horses as they rushed onto the track just before the race started triggering a huge police response. So I think like police response is a little different with animals. I think like uh, police response. Members of the organization, police. Mm. A police response like how everything becomes organized, things of that sort, right? And this is quite unnatural, like, yes. So here, the M dash is used to refer to animal rights activists, right? So uh, it, it is kind of like giving a definition. Um, M dash is giving a definition to the uh, last phrase, right, used. Um, in which case, the ones, you know, the very ones, very here means the exact ones, hoping to protect horses as they rushed onto the rat track just before the race started, triggering a huge police response. Triggering means causing, right? And pay attention to the structure right here. It's not like which trigger, but no, triggering, right? A huge police response. A huge police response. Like, uh, police response so obviously obviously horses are not gonna like that right um and that kind of caused a um police response like relating to the organization of the setting this chaotic scene is emblematic of the greater problem facing horse sports wow this is just a great structure this chaotic um uh, Chaotic means without order, you know, like a messy scene, messy, you know, place. Scene is a picture that you can envision in your, in, in, you know, in front of your eyes. Is emblematic, meaning emblematic means uh, showing, right? So is a symbol of the greater, right, problem, something, something. Force uh, facing horses, horse sports. So emblematic that like there's also the word sim uh symptomatic i think like symptomatic and, and and emblematic right it means representing a particular person so a sword is emblematic of power gained by violence a sword means right instead of just saying a sword is a power gained by violence no it, it kind of represents that idea or concept in this case that scene represents that particular great problem which is so here i want you to pay attention to the um colon right here so this is what we call a colon and um it, it is actually really important that you understand the usage of different punctuation marks because after all if you're ever uh going to get a high score on ielts writing you definitely need to be familiar with these as well and so a uh, colon in here is used to, you know, explain what that greater problem is, right? So instead of saying, this is the same as which is. So here, here, we could have gotten rid of this, you know, and instead could have said which is. That that would not have been as efficient. Like, read it. Let's read it now. The chaotic scene is emblematic of the greater problem facing horses for sports which is they're losing the approval of a well-meaning but under-informed public. You see, it doesn't quite, which is that? We could also say, which is that? But that that's like, you know, there's this golden rule in, in writing where um, you need to be trying to use as few words as possible to convey as much meaning as possible. I'm going to repeat that. 
there's this golden rule in writing, which is that. You see, I'm using that already. I need to, you know, put a colon. I, I think I, this is a good, great example, you know. Uh, there is, you know, a golden rule in writing. And what is that? You see, like, you need to ask yourself, what is that? And then instead of that, you just put a colon. Um, or which is that? Instead of which is that, right? There is a golden rule in writing. What is that, right? So you could have said it in different ways. Like, there's a golden rule in uh, writing. This is, and that's not, like, smooth, right? And that's not effective. Instead, how about we use a colon? Nice and, you know, easy. Um, and this is actually really, really good. As long as you use it in the right place. Don't try to use colon, like, you know, just because you want to use it. No, use it because you have to use it. There's a golden rule in, in writing. Um what was it? Write as few words as possible, but but convey as much meaning, you know, as possible. Yes, that's that, you know. And after a colon, you may have an independent clause where there are um, there is a subject and a verb, right? The independent clause is okay. Also, dependent clauses are also fine, like. Unfinished sentences are also fine after a colon. There's actually a lot you can learn about colons, which um, I'll put a link down below once we finish this lesson, where you can learn a lot about, like, you know, more about how to use M dashes, a colon, right? All right. Uh, let's now go on. Um, so what does that mean? Like, this whole thing where um, activists rushing onto the tracks, like, for triggering a police response, uh, shows a bigger problem, which is that they are losing the approval of a well-meaning but under-informed public. Um, oh, like this is a really diff difficult sentence, I believe. So they, um, so I believe they, by they, they're probably, uh, they they're probably referring back to sports, like they're losing the approval of a well-meaning, uh, of a well-meaning but under-informed public. Okay, so well-meaning, what does that mean? Well-meaning, wanting to have a good effect. Oh, like I did not know this word. This is great, you know. Um, so I know his well-meaning. Oh, I actually know this word. Like I know you mean well. You know, this is a really natural and common expression that native speakers mostly use so like i know you mean well but right so i know you mean well uh you could say like well meaning as well right so i know you're you know well meaning meaning you you, you only wish you know good, good things for me right so it's like you you want uh good things to happen to me but like for example i know he's well well meaning but i wish he'd leave us alone right so for example, when, uh, when a friend of yours came, you know, to see you and you don't really want to see anybody, right? And then you'll be like, I know he, you know, he w means well, or I know he's well-meaning, but I really want to be alone right now, right? So that's that. So you're well-meaning. Um, so, and here, um, they're losing the approval. Sports, right? So horse sports, or should we say, equine sports are losing the approval what that means is people are starting to not like sports right so losing the approval that's also good lose the approval of someone so if you let's say did something wrong uh, and then someone who you who you respected found that, that out right uh, let's say your teacher and then you lost his approval you see so and if the sports, um, you know, horse sports are losing the approval of a well-meaning but under-informed public, right? So what that means is, right, so this whole scene, this whole chaotic scene where um, activists are rushing onto the tracks triggering a huge police response um, has a bigger, you know, like the, the problems run, you know, deeper. Um, and, and they are that um, sports are losing the approval of uh, the public, 
And that public is, uh, although the public wants to do something good, right? Wants good things to happen, like wanting to have a good effect. Um, but they're under informed, meaning they don't know well enough what's happening, you know, behind the curtains, right? So I think that's what they're talking about, really. Um, all right. This is, this is, this is nice, you know. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm not sure if we can finish this whole article, but we'll we'll do our best. I just really want to, like, you know, the less is more. Um, as long as we make this a habit, make this a daily habit, I don't think it's necessary for us to finish um, analyzing the whole article. But my goal is to, you know, just analyze a few paragraphs and then leave the rest to you so that you pick it up, you know, by yourself. Now, um, all right, where were we? If the activists had known more about horse behavior, right, they might have opted for protests that wouldn't stress out these animals. High, strung, um, thoroughbred set to run the most challenging course of their careers. Um, these animals, who are, right, stress out these animals. High, strung, high, strung, what does that mean? High, strung is very nervous and easily upset. Oh, so these this you know, breed of horses uh, are high strung, are easily upset. And I hope you guys know that there are such animals, um, like there are these animals that are easily upset, that, that, that tend to be quite delicate in nature. And, and you know, they, they can be upset by anything. So high strung, um, what thoroughbreds set to run the most challenging course of their careers, right? So um, let me try to make it even better. Uh, if the activists had known more about horse behavior, they might have opted for protests that wouldn't stress out these animals. Uh, high strung um, thoroughbreds set to run the most challenging course of their career. Oh, oh, I see. So here, um, the comma is serving as a description of these animals. What are these animals? These animals are high, strong, throat. and like they're sort of like expanding on what those animals are, and obviously like giving a definition, like using adjectives like high, strong, um, like most challenging course of their careers. Like in this way, the the writer is trying to show that they are stressed out as it is and and then you don't want you know further stress right um that's what they're saying all right animal rights activists fill an important role speaking out for voiceless fellow species that become victims of human mistreatment oh okay become victims of victims of human mistreatment if you mistreat someone it means you don't treat them well you don't um take care of them well right so you just are rude to them and become victims of meaning become the you know animals become quite victim right so they become the victims of human mistreatment what that means is people will treat them badly right so become victim victim is uh, ulja, right? So I hope you know that, right? If you fall victim to something, it means you um, get hurt by someone. All right. Fill an important role. So fill an important role means you, um, you know, like you are in that role. Fill an important role speaking out for voiceless. Like here, you could have probably said like they play an important role where they speak out for voiceless fellow species. Okay, so really important role. Um, speaking. Right? Feeling an important role speaking. This may sound a little strange to you guys, but I think this is a language pattern. Speak out means like to speak officially against something or you know, for something. For voiceless. Voiceless, not in its literal sense, like voiceless without voice, like not really able to what 
not like people or or species like animals that are literally voiceless like that can't quite express their complaints or um species that will not be heard right so fellow species i think they literally mean a voiceless species but we urgently need their efforts to be based on science rather than rather than rather than on passions emotions or anthrop anthropomorphism oh my god morphism um anthropomorph anthropomorph oh my god i'm not going to try to pronounce it. anthropomorphism all right anthropomorphism what whatever it is you know what is that relating to humans morphism what is it okay so odamichilik right i guess that's that you know Ism. what is that the showing of treatment of animals the showing or treating of animals gods or objects as if they are human in appearance character oh okay i see oh so it's like elevating them to a godlike status all right social media has become a powerful outlet uh all right that, that, that's a nice that's another nice you know media has become a powerful outlet meaning like um like i think medium outlet means here medium way of communicating something right it's a way of communicating for some actors to spread propaganda that isn't necessarily grounded in either truth or science this is another quite complex sentence so what that means is here social media is a great tool for activists who want to tell lies instead of you know um basing their efforts on truth or science right so so they just you know spread propaganda propaganda is where when you just disclose part of the information right not fully uh just like where you you know get videos of famous people out of context and then you kind of you know uh you cut them and then post them on on social media that's propaganda uh so that's basically the same thing here so they spread propaganda like um not completely you know backed or or um whatever you'd like to call it right so it's like propaganda is only showing part of the information right so propaganda and 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 hence a lie informational ideas only giving one part of an argument that are broadcast published in some way spread with the intention of influencing people so for example like i think andrew tate has you know repeatedly fallen act a uh, victim to propaganda where his you know um his his opinions or his videos get you know they they kind of they're taken out of context and people publish them and then that's propaganda because that's not exactly what he said they're just taking it out of context that's basically propaganda has become a powerful outlet for something something to do something this this is really good you know really really good that isn't necessarily grounded necessarily means that is not um like therefore right necessarily means therefore in every case or therefore and usually use it actually not usually you always use it in negative sentences i i see a lot of people use this in in positive sentences thinking that well they're using necessarily and that 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 must be good no so i guess like uh let me see where where were we so like that isn't necessarily that is not you know always grounded in either truth or science all right this fuels fires that risk all right this again i love the comments you know the commentary section the comment section of you know the view section of the new scientists so the the editors you know writing such articles are just second to none fires um that risk right doing little service to the animal they want to protect what that means is here when they just only spread propaganda like you these activists who want to protect animals uh what they're doing 
is they're not really doing any service. They're not. They're only doing little service to the animals they want to protect, but rather they're just spreading misinformation, right? Uh, which is potentially harmful not only for the animals but also for humankind. Um, yeah, I think this would be enough, guys. Like, I, I just wanted to do it for like thirty minutes or something, uh, and I hope you can do the rest by yourself. If you have any questions, you know, related to this article, just feel free to you know drop them in the comments below. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna you know probably attach a few articles related to punctuation after we finish this lesson. Um, and just to sum up um, what we've read, you know, this far. So basically, you know, one you know piece of news about a horse, a, a racer horse, in fact, uh, br breaking its neck, and you know because of of what uh, being forced to run over the fences, right? Um, to, triggered, right? Or we could say sparked a lot more debate than than people anticipated and and that debate revolves around activists right um so how animal activists are doing more harm than good where they are spreading propaganda saying that something ba something bad is happening when in reality it's not they're only showing one part of the picture picture to the to the public which is basically propaganda um and that is blurring the image of um animal sport equine sports industry uh and basically there though that industry is losing the approval of of uh, the public that is under informed but at the same time uh, um what was the word well-meaning right so well-meaning uh a well-meaning but under informed public um and Certainly, like me certain measures needs to need to be taken against this issue. I, I believe this is a really, really interesting article, like involving politics, uh, you know, the animal world and human rights and everything, like animal rights. This is a really, really interesting article. So I want you to finish this up on your own, um, and then I'll see you, you know, later, probably like tomorrow, uh, where we will discuss, you know, some more articles. Uh, but this is basically it. Um, if I, you know, analyze this any further, I will probably share a few more challenges with you in the channel and then probably like test you using quizzes and everything. But if not, then uh, make sure you analyze this article, you know, more fully, uh, just like I am doing right now. Look up the new words that you don't know and then try to summarize like I did, at, at you know, at the end. Um, so. In the end, I think, right? Um, what I did was basically try to connect the dots of what I read just right now, but by not looking at it what in, in any way whatsoever. Uh, and this is going to help you improve your remembering rather than memorizing. So you want to be able to remember well um, because you want to be able to use certain words correctly. And a lot of people ask me, like, teacher, how do you, you know, know all these words and how are you able to use all these nice phrases and everything and and my answer is always the same i just read something or listen to something and i i recycle it immediately um and i also recommend you write a short summary for what you've read this is going to help you improve your writing uh, all the more and speaking of which if you pay special attention to such um, marks as M dash and colon and, and some other punctuation features. I'm sure your writing will get uh, even better. Um, and after all, just by reading something, right? Like no matter what it is, you're still, you know, contributing to your writing in ways you may not realize. So just keep reading and reading and then make sure that it's something you understand well. Uh, and, and hopefully you should be able to um, improve your writing in addition to your reading. So, yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.